Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum, I'm here today at the Rock Island Auction Company taking a look at one of the pistols that is going to be in their upcoming April 2020 premiere auction. And because American gun collectors can't read Japanese, this is called a Papa Nambu. There are uh, four different major variations of sort of this family of pistol. And the, the actual year designations for them and the actual Japanese designations for them were, well, it took a while for them to become really known in English language literature. And in the meantime, a bunch of colloquial reference names started to be used. So the oldest one, the very first Nambu pistols, became known as the Grandpa Nambu. This is actually technically the Nambu automatic pistol modified type A. Uh, which became known as the Papa Nambu. There was a miniaturized version uh, that was called the Baby Nambu. And then we have kind of the standard World War II era uh, Type 14 Nambu, which didn't get its own unique name for whatever reason. It's just the normal Nambu. Uh, and then there is also the Type 94, developed later on, actually developed more closer to World War II. But those are all subjects for other videos. What we want to take a look at today is the Papa. So, uh, this is actually less its own unique development than it is an improvement on Kijiro Nambu's original pistol design, which was introduced in 1902. These kind of were developed between 1904 and 1906. They went into production first in 1906, continuing the existing serial number range from the original grandpas. So about 2400 or 2450 you start seeing Papa Nambus. And uh, well, I'll tell you what, why don't we go ahead and take a look at this up close, and we'll compare it to a grandpa, and I'll show you all of the changes that were made, because they are substantial, and a bunch of them are pretty important improvements to the design. We'll start with a basic overview and some markings. Uh, the grandpa is still chambered for 8mm Nambu, that is 8x22, it's a little bottlenecked cartridge, Luger-like box, detachable box magazine, right there. On the top of the chamber we have the marking of the Tokyo Artillery Arsenal, which is where this was manufactured. And on the right side we have the serial number. Uh, for the Tokyo Arsenal these picked up from the end of the Grandpa Nambu serial range, so they'll start at about 2450. This is a very early example. Uh, guns made at TG&E, we'll talk about those in a minute, those will start at serial number 1. We also have this three character marking up there, and that translates to a Nambu type. On the opposite side then we have a two character marking, and that translates to army type. These were not actually formally adopted by the Japanese army, although they were adopted by the Japanese navy uh, in 1909, uh, which is when TG&E started making them. But uh, Nambu went ahead and marked this as army type, kind of just as a marketing thing. We have an adjustable tangent rear sight, it goes out to 500 meters back there. I know folks are going to ask about these characters, and I do not know what those translate to, um, but it's not uncommon. I think a lot of grandpa or a lot of Papa Nambus uh, were re-imported out of China and have markings like this on the grips. I've seen a bunch of others. Whether those are Japanese markings or Chinese markings, I am not sure. Now let's take a look at the differences between the early Grandpa and the later Papa. Uh, just to reiterate, the Grandpa was introduced in 1902, the Papa designed in 1904 and went into production in 1906. So um, at first glance you'll see that the trigger guard has been substantially enlarged on the Papa. That's important. This is like actually a really, really small trigger guard. And if you're wearing gloves, well, good luck. Uh, the grandpas all had stock slots. That was removed on the Papa Nambus. There are a couple of examples out there that are basically all special presentation models where they did equip them with shoulder stocks, but as a standard production item the stock slot went away. You can also see that there was a little bit of a change to the profile of the grip. Not all that much, but enough to necessitate new tooling uh, to uh, produce them. These pistols all have lanyard loops on them. On the Grandpa it was a fixed lanyard staple there. On the Papa it now swivels, which makes it a little more flexible. The magazines were also changed. 
Uh, this is most distinctive because the grandpas had a wooden base plate, where the papas had an aluminum base plate. And the, the actual geometry of the magazine changed as well, and these are not interchangeable. So Mechanically, the Nambu pistols are all locked breech, short recoil pistols. So when you fire, this is going to reciprocate backwards, and that unlocks the gun. Then your bolt cycles, um, similar to a C96, in a few ways. Uh, these do lock open on an empty magazine. However, when you take the magazine out, the bolt drops home, because the only thing holding it open is the magazine. Now, to disassemble this, the procedure is a little funky. Uh, if you've seen the Grandpa Nambu video, you already know how this works, but we'll go through it again here. Uh, start by taking the firing pin, push it in a little bit, rotate it 90 degrees counterclockwise. That allows us to remove the guide rod and firing pin spring. Then, this is kind of a three-handed affair. So what you have to do is uh, unlock the gun by pushing the barrel back, and that's best done by pushing the muzzle down on a non-marring surface, like this. Then you are going to push the magazine catch in and pull the trigger guard down. The trigger guard is actually a, uh, an independent part that's in a pair of rails on the front of the frame, and pulling it down allows the slide to come back. So. If I push down there, and then push that in... There we go. All right. Then we can slide this down a little. This is, I think, actually unique in pistol disassembly. Uh, then we can pull the whole barrel and slide assembly out of the frame of the gun. Once we have this, we have the actual locking block. This pivots up and down, locks this into uh, the action. That comes off, and then we can pull the bolt out the back, and, and our firing pin was left inside the frame. Something to be aware of on these pistols, this firing pin is very fragile. Do not dry fire these pistols, uh, unless you really need to, uh, because they do have a tendency to break firing pins. So uh, there's the top half. There's a little bit more we can do on the frame. The recoil spring for the gun is held in this tube in the side. Now that we have the bolt out, we can, we can unscrew this rear piece. That comes off, and then I gently let out the main spring and its guide rod, right there. And now you can see that empty tube where they went. The trigger is a rather unusual system on the Nambu, where when you pull the trigger, it's actually going to push this up. This is the rear end of the trigger bar. So when I push it up at the front, it drops down at the rear. And what it's actually doing there is holding this tab on. The tab comes out to the side, and it gets held in place by this bar. So when this goes down, the firing pin is released and can strike forward. It's a, there, there's a lot of unusual stuff about the Nambu. This was not copied directly from any other, well, from any European design. So there is a Papa Nambu disassembled. This is all conceptually the same as both the Type 14 Nambu that came after it, and the Grandpa Nambu that came before it, as well as, of course, the Baby Nambu. Now, the Type 94 was a completely different mechanism, different pistol altogether, but that would be uh, many years after the development of this. All in all, just over 10,000 of these pistols were produced between 1906 and 1928. They were made by two different firms. One of them was the Tokyo Artillery Arsenal, which would be later renamed the Tokyo Army Arsenal. Uh, they started production in 1906. They were the first to make them. And production there ended in 1923. They're, they were actually in the middle of some reorganization of the manufacturing when the Great Tokyo Earthquake of 1923 did tremendous damage to the arsenal. 
and production of the Papa Nambu never restarted there. Uh, the other factory was Tokyo Gas and Electric, a private company that also made pistols, both for foreign contract, they're the ones who made them for Thailand, uh, and also for sale to army officers or Navy officers. Uh, they started production in 1909, and they would produce them until right about 1928. So what ultimately led to the end of this pistol is that the Japanese Army adopted the Type 14 Nambu in 1925, and the Japanese Navy followed suit, adopting it in 1927. So once the Navy had also adopted it, there was no longer any real market for these pistols to be private sold to officers. They'd much rather have the newer, better version, the Type 14, and so TG&E stopped manufacturing them. So there were 10,000 made, a lot of them lost uh, in the fighting in China, as well as World War II against the United States. There are very few of them left today, and they're a very cool... Uh, I think they're, they're one of the cool and distinctive, unique early automatic pistol designs. So uh, if you would like this one, uh, or if you'd like a Papa Nambu, this one as well as at least one other are in Rock Island's upcoming auction. You can check out their description and pictures and the other guns that are available in their catalogue via their website. Thanks for watching.